Fiberglass is used in the production of sporting goods. Formula One race cars. Yachts. And even aircraft and spacecraft parts. Yet this material has also been found in some living things, right from the day they came into being. One of these is the crocodile. The special tissue in the crocodile's thick skin has the same structure as fiberglass. This tissue is made very strong by the fibers it contains. Added to the tissues, these fibers make the tissue exceedingly tough. Artificial composites are much weaker and more primitive than these. Natural composites, like all materials in nature, are an example of God's matchless artistry of creation. God indicates in the Quran that there are examples in the creatures he created. And in your creation and all the creatures he has spread about, there are signs for people with certainty. Another example of a natural composite are the tissues that join the muscles and bones together, tendons. Thanks to the fibers that constitute them, tendons are exceedingly strong and resistant. This explains why the tendon design has become a source of inspiration in the construction industry. The steel girder technology used in suspension bridges was developed with the same structure as tendons. Janine M. Benyus from Rutgers University writes in her book on biomimicry. The tendon in your forearm is a twisted bundle of cables, like the cables used in a suspension bridge. Each individual cable is itself a twisted bundle of thinner cables. Each of these thinner cables is itself a twisted bundle of molecules, which are, of course, twisted helical bundles of atoms. This incomparable design in the tendon is one of the proofs of the artistry in God's creation. In one verse of the Quran, God reveals, We created them and made their joints strong. And if we wish, we can replace them with others like them. In nature, a great many different species of insects produce silk, yet the silk of one of these is really very special. The spiders. The spider's web is one of the strongest materials in the world. The silky spider thread, less than one millimeter across, is five times stronger than steel of the same dimensions. This thread can stretch up to four times its own length. It is so light that a thread stretching three times around the world would weigh no more than one kilogram. All spiders produce threads with different properties. And these threads can be restored to their original states. A spider can easily turn a damaged web back into silk again. For example, the spider, diadematos, uses the secretion glands in its abdomen to produce seven different types of thread.
The DuPont Company, the world's largest manufacturer of chemical substances, initiated a major research study to examine spider thread. At the end of this long research, costing tens of millions of dollars, the molecular structure of spider thread was finally unraveled in the DuPont laboratories. Following that, this molecular structure was imitated to produce the strongest known material in the world, Kevlar. Although nowhere nearly as strong and resistant as spider thread, Kevlar is still the strongest material capable of being produced by man. Traveling at 150 meters a second, a bullet makes a hole in whatever it hits. Yet it cannot penetrate Kevlar. Kevlar is used in the production of bulletproof vests. In aircraft carrier housers to bring planes to a halt. In mine shoes in the space industry and everywhere where strength is essential. Yet spider thread, which man imitated to produce Kevlar, is a great deal stronger than Kevlar itself. In other words, Using the most advanced technology and finest laboratories, the best scientists in the world studied the thread produced by a tiny insect and tried to imitate it. Even then they still failed to match the ability of this tiny creature. That is because God created the spider. God gave this little creature the magnificent abilities it possesses. skyscrapers the pride of the 21st century yet these imposing structures gave rise to a new problem that would stretch the minds of architects and engineers keeping the outsides of tall buildings clean Many companies all over the world conducted research and tried to find a solution to this problem. Yet the answer finally came not from laboratories and technology, but from somewhere very familiar, from nature. This is a lotus flower, known as the white lily. It grows in muddy and dirty environments. Yet its leaves are always clean. There are specks of dust on the surface of the lotus. Yet the flower gets rid of them in a most interesting manner. The lotus directs the drops of rain on its leaves towards the dust particles. The raindrops gather up all the dust and the leaves are again spotless. The lotus thus always remains clean. This feature of the lotus is today used in the design of building exteriors. One company, ISPO, even produced an external cladding material known as lotusan. The difference between the two faces can be seen 